I want to demonstrate some of the new tools I'm developing for um, full arch coverage, like bite splints and surgical guides. Uh, the first one is relatively simple. It a, creates a survey line based on the view. So something to the effect of if we took our classical surveyor, marked it with a pencil. So I'll just run this script. Okay, that happens. Now you can see that from the view we were viewing, these areas right here um, represent our undercuts. Um, the top line is going to be your height of contour. Uh, the bottom line will be the depth of contour or if there's a reverse curvature. So it, you view this from above, hide the lower model, now we can see our undercuts. So, kind of cool. Um, what I would plan to do then is use that to help us stay above these undercuts if we were going to make a, a passive splint. So I'll extrude this, you know, just a little above the heights of contour. So if we did this, we could imagine You know, adapting our splint all the way around. Let's just say that I've done that already. Okay, so now if I view this from above, and now the view is very important here um, because it's going to calculate an insertion axis based on your view. And this is a considerable improvement over previous methods, and honestly, I think it might be one of the nicer ones out there. Um, it's fast and it makes a really nice, smooth, even splint. Um, it's a fairly hard problem to evenly offset uh, surfaces with multiple convexities and concavities. And if you look from above, you know, we preserve the embrasure form. And if we take a look at this, uh, I don't want to take a look at this, we see that the you know, the mesh is quite clean and it's not because we're remeshing it, it's actually the way in which we're constructing it. So I'm pretty proud of this algorithm. Um, come back to the view again if we want to make it thicker, we can redo it. And you can see it, it does a great job um, making a nice smooth mesh that's inflated but not self-intersecting. So I will hide this. This is the refractory model that I use to, to make that. If you if you take a look in here, these are the kinds of problems you get when you offset a mesh like that. You get all the all the self-intersecting geometry. But the way I'm using this model along with the original one to make the splint um, really produces a nice result. So, pretty happy with that. And this is a problem that I've brainstormed on probably off and on for the past couple of years. Not really being sure how I would could tackle this um, effectively, but now that we've done it, I'm pretty proud. So you select the model, select the curve, doesn't matter what order. Bezier splint, Bezier splint, and then do your thickness, probably 1.5. You know, and even if this isn't a transparent material, it still gives you references to what's going on beneath if you were going to then use this for a surgical guide. Okay, so that is the scoop, and along with these. Um, undercuts, you can now get an idea of how passive or active your splint will be. Certainly it's blocked out um, in the way it's projected down into the occlusion. But if you wanted to to act to make it active by engaging under the height of contour, um, that could be pretty easily obtained. So okay, hope you like it.
and thanks for watching.